Hello ladies and gentlemen, Dan Hughes here from the Nick team. I'm going to be taking you through a demonstration focused on the zone mapping system from Silver Effects Pro 2. Now if you follow my cursor into the lower right hand corner, we'll jump right in and take a look at this indicator system. Now as I scroll over each one of the individual numbers down in the zone mapping system, you're going to see resulting indicator show up on the image itself. Now the photo that we're looking at is simply a gradient because I wanted to show you uh, the full range and, and what each individual zone looks like uh, and how it relates to the, the zone next to it basically. Uh, in fact as I scroll over each one you can see as the little indicator shifts and changes uh, another option that you have is if you click on the particular zone, if you want to pay attention to maybe zone 10 uh, and zone 0, which are very important zones pertaining to our black and white tonal range. Zone 0 would be shadows without detail, so that's just the stuff that's black with no detail. And zone 10 would be white with no detail, so basically blown out stuff. Uh, as I click on each one of those zones, you can see as the, uh, the indicator sticky. So it's going to be on and I can then take a look at the rest of the image and how the tones kind of relate uh, to the zones that we have on right now. That'll also make more sense when we actually uh, take a look at a photograph instead of this gradient. But I want to go in and click on each one of the individual zones. Uh, you can see this gets pretty hairy as far as it, it gets very busy in the image. It's hard to kind of pay attention to what's happening uh, to the actual tonal values. So on a photograph, I probably wouldn't turn on each of the individual zones. Uh, but in this case, just so you can see kind of the relationship uh, between each one of the zones. And if I were to go into like my brightness slider and I start sliding that to the left, you can see I'm darkening the whole image. So the darker zones, zone 0 and zone 1, 2, 3, and 4, they're going to get bigger. Uh, whereas you know the brighter zones, zone 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, they're going to get smaller. Uh, but basically, as you adjust your tonal values, uh, you're able to watch the relationships between all of the different tones, uh, as well as get a good idea as to what your tonal spectrum looks like, or, or tonal range, rather, looks like uh, within your black and white photo. If I go and add contrast or subtract contrast, you can see as that indicator system changes as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at an actual image, though, so that we can relate it to a photograph instead of uh, this gradient. All right, so we've got our photograph open in Silver Effects Pro 2. Uh, I'm going to go into my lower right-hand corner. Let's just take a look at how the zones kind of stack up for this image. As I scroll over zone 0, you can see I do have a couple areas in the image that are black with no detail. Right, so those are those shadow areas, which I don't have a problem with. I kind of like that we've got this nice, kind of grounded, very dark set of values in these dark shadows. Uh, I might want a zone 10 somewhere in the image, though. That is, I might want something that's just completely white. Now, I do want to be careful if I'm going to make an inkjet print. Uh, I, I want to be careful that I don't generally have a zone 10, especially if I'm printing on a glossy or a semi-gloss, even most matte papers. Because if I have a zone 10, uh, I get what's called gloss differential. That is, zone 10 would mean the tones are completely blown out. Let's say I place a control point uh, on, on the background here and I brighten these values up until I start to see some zone 10. If I print this on an inkjet print, no ink is going to get laid down in this area, or not much, if any, ink will be laid down in that area. And what that'll mean is that this area has ink, this area does not have ink, uh, and therefore there's going to be a difference in the glossiness, if you will. It's a gloss differential, the difference between where there is ink and where there's no ink. That said, if we're going to make an inkjet print, I typically want to make sure I don't have any zone 10, uh, especially if I'm next to you know some values like this. That said, um, if I'm going to use the image for web uh, or anything like that, it's not going to hurt to have a zone 10 because it just has an area that's totally blown out. Then we have this full tonal range from shadow to highlight. Now, let's take a look at how we can use the zone mapping system in a real time or a real situation. And I'm going to just add a little more contrast to our image overall until we start to get some more zone 0 and some more zone 10 in the photograph. Uh, and add about 25% contrast in this image, we're starting to see that. Right? But again, like I said, we don't want to have any zones 10 sorry, in the image. So what I'll do is either take my highlight protection slider on the right hand side and start bringing that up into the right. What that'll do is take the very brightest values, start to darken them down throughout the entire image. Or if I liked my highlights everywhere in the photo except for maybe this area, I'd probably just take a control point, 
place it in this general vicinity, make sure that my area of influence is encompassing that area, and I'm just going to darken down those values until my zone 10 disappears. Right? And at this point, I'm at negative 10% or negative 9% brightness. So I'm not really even adjusting those tones too much, but what that's going to mean is that I'm going to be able to print with a little bit of ink there, so I'm not going to have that, that gloss differential, right? if you will. Uh, the other option, let's say I have some shadows without detail these blacks, the zone zero, and I don't want that to happen. Maybe I want everything to have full detail. Well, I can either take my shadow protection slider to the right, it's going to take the very darkest values and brighten them up, uh, or I could, just like we did with the highlights, drop a control point in that shadow area and just start to uh, brighten those values up, right, until that zone zero disappears. Right? In which case, if we're happy with those tones where they are, I might move back down into my zone mapping system and turn off zone 0, maybe turn off zone 10, and if we needed to, we could take a look at the rest of the zones and maybe their relationships with the other tonal values in the image uh, or work however we might need to. Uh, but using that zone mapping system is a great way uh, to be able to pay attention to the overall values, take a look at your very dark shadows, your bright highlights, your midtones. Um, you know, I will say, we typically want to have a full tonal range in a black and white image to create nice depth. Now, that said, it's not every time. That doesn't apply in every single photograph, but for most black and white images, it's nice to have a nice dark shadow. It's great to have a really bright highlight. And using your zone mapping system, you can get a really good feel for whether you're achieving that or not. But that's your zone mapping system within SilverFX Pro 2. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed.